everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we are out spreading a bit of gypsum bright and early this morning, trying to beat the breeze. I think it will pick up here in a couple of hours, so we'll just sort of get as much done as we can. I came out yesterday morning and I got 50 hectares done here north of the house, which was really good. I, I tried to put the drone up and get some footage for this video, but long story short is I need a new phone because uh, the drone controller plugs in through the charging port on the phone and it just won't do it so i'm sort of uh i'm a bit snookered with the drone at the moment <laughs> but anyway this morning we were just cleaning i don't know the gypsum just tends to build up in the spinners and it like compacts in the spinners and it gets really real hard real hard to get out and then it doesn't seem to be doing a good job of spreading so we just had to clean that out and ran a bit of grease into the spinner bearings and uh we're back into it we've only about six hectares left in this paddock here and then we'll be finished at the pile we're at down there. We'll shift up, you know, a few hundred metres to this other pile. Anyway, you guys will see. You reckon that's spreading a bit nicer now? Or? Yeah, a little bit away, but I mean, it's still not shipping out. Well, you gotta be a bit careful near that spreader because that thing launches rocks out a long way. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's about a bucket full left there on that pile and well, we've got to move four or five hundred meters up to this other paddock now and that's where the other pile is so we're gonna to have to duck all the way back down there to get one bucket full but anyway it is what it is so we'll go run this out and we'll come back and uh, get that last bucket full and then dad will come back out and we'll shift everything up to this other little pile up here So why are we spreading gypsum? Well, it looks like you're pretty much just spreading dust out there, Henry, and to be honest, we pretty much are. <laughs> but no, gypsum typically is a really good soil conditioner, but also it has a good sulfur content, which is what we're mainly putting it out for this year. Really good for our legume crops, good for our canola. So anywhere we're putting beans or canola, we're focusing on putting gypsum out. Normally we'd go about one tonne to the hectare. This year we're going a little bit lighter. We're sort of around that 650, 700 kilos. Mainly because the season last year wasn't the best and we're just putting out really what we need for the 12 months ahead. So the normal sulfur containing fertilizer that we buy for these crops, it's just been really hit and miss to get over the last few years. And Honestly, this is a nicer way of giving these crops that sulfur content anyway. It's organic and uh, much nicer for the soil. trying real hard then to not push the bucket too hard into the ground when I was scooping up the last of that gypsum because we had that 10-12 uh, mil of rain the other day and underneath the pile it's just so soft and damp that every time you push the duck the bucket the ducket <laughs> the bucket into the ground uh, it's scooping up a whole heap of dirt so I'd rather leave a little bit of gypsum behind there and leave the soil there rather than taking a big bucket full of dirt at the same time.
breeze has just gotten strong enough out there now that it's made me want to quit. It's not horrendous, but you know how fine and powdery and dusty that gypsum is. So uh, tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday are supposed to be really, really good uh, all morning for spreading. So I'd rather just leave it until then. We got through another 20, 25 hectares and we were down to, well, that little tiny pile we're at now and then one more pile of gypsum after that and we're done. So uh, we'll have to move on to some lime after that, but yeah, nowhere near the volume of spreading that we've had the last few years because, well, the, the season hasn't really allowed it. The budget hasn't allowed it. So, but nevertheless, we're still chipping away at the program, doing what we can. load we're seeming to have to do this i don't know whether it's because we've had that bit of rain and everything's just a bit sticky but it's very annoying so we might get the hydraulic cylinder on this bar now i picked that up yesterday so that's the only thing that this is really waiting on at the moment so once that's back on here this thing's mobile it's ready for seeding the air seed is ready for seeding, so I can just forget about these items and they're all good to roll. And then after that, we might get the vetch, the seed vetch that's in this truck out now that I've got that field bin sorted over the road. Uh, we can get that out of there and then there's some screenings, some barley screenings in the chaser bin on the back of the tractor. I need to get that chaser bin off the tractor at some point, but I need to get the screenings out of the, <laughs> out of the um, chaser bin, so we might throw them in the back of the truck. Once the vetch is out of here, See whether this thing's going to fire up. Don't be nervous there for a minute, the old girl. I'll get this thing out the shed out of the way now anyway, that way if I need to walk backwards and forwards for some tools, it's not in my way. <laughs> Look, I don't know if I should say it, but I'm just going to put a little teaser out there. There could be some very big upgrades happening with this whole setup, but that's all I'm going to say. Now, it's funny why we're talking about trucks. Uh, when I was out spreading gypsum this morning, any farmers watching might say, well, you know, I was talking about the rate being a little bit less than they might say, well, gypsum's not even expensive, so what are you worried about? And it's true. Gypsum is not expensive. I think it's like 34 or 35 bucks a ton from memory. But that's not the expensive part about getting gypsum here. The expensive part about getting it here is the freight, without a doubt. So uh, while we're on the subject of trucks, you know, that would be an obvious place for our farm to increase its efficiency is by doing our own freight. But the problem with that is you've got to have bums in seats and that's something that we just don't have. So anyway, that's all I've got to say about that for now. Uh, righty -o. What is gonna be the easiest way to get this sucker on? The easy way is there is no easy way. All right, I have squeezed myself in here now. All right. Oh, that was the easiest lift on I've probably just about ever had. So then we'll get a jack underneath here and we'll jack this up so I can get this pin lined up, this bottom pin. And then it's just a couple of oil lines. This side's the easy side, no depth control on here. In regards to that, anyway. Oh, you would, wouldn't you? Oh, you're really kidding me, aren't you? That is awfully tight. Turn over at all? Or? No, there's a battery still showing green. Yeah, you just got to play with the isolator. Like push it in when you turn it on. Alright, uh, I did wonder. I did fiddle around a bit, but it didn't seem to. Oh, do I give that a try? Oh, yeah, that's why I got the truck out because I was going to take it over after I finished putting this on and empty it. Uh... That really hang down like that? I'll be damned if I can remember. Wow, 
Okay, that's a new one for me. There we go, she is on. Okay, that's another job done. Now, Dad just came over asking me something about the auger not starting and he's talking about getting the vetch out of the truck and I said, well, that's why I've got the truck out of the shed because I was about to head over there anyway after I finished that job and uh, empty it. So we're gonna go over there and see what the auger situation is, whether he got that auger going or whatever, because he just mumbled something and then he wandered off. <laughs> Oh, have a look at that, he set me up, lovely. We could probably use a bit of go-go juice and I don't think there's much left over here so I might have to go see if we got some back over at the other shed. Take this ladder over with me because I'll need to get in the back of that truck and scrape it out, of course. We've got one broken down auger there, of course. It just has to break down at this time of the year when we've got nothing better to do. But honestly, it looks like it's got a problem with the ignition switch, I think, so I'll have to come and have a bit more of a look at that at some stage, but uh, last time I just jump-started it and it went, but that doesn't seem to be the case today, so something a little more sinister going on. We might just go out into one of the sheep holding yards out here and tip this up empty all that vetch right out of the back so it's uh, relatively clean. I'm gonna need two hands for this. So what is the date today? It is the 5th of April, so we will want to be starting seeding in no more than two weeks at this stage. The 15th would be ideal, that we'd make a start on vetch. We'd get that in the ground, we'd fly through that, it's just a break crop, all we do is seed it, there's no spraying or anything like that that needs to be done. It's grown as sheep feed and a nitrogen returning crop, so we'd smash into that, get that out of the way, and then probably after Anzac Day, around the 25th, any time after that we will start putting canola in the ground, beans, they're the fiddly ones and they can go in early, there's no dramas there and then it'll depend a little bit what the weather does but even if it does rain, look we probably wouldn't start putting wheat in the ground until around mid-May because we want to minimise our frost risk. Uh, anything, if we go too early we risk getting a frost in spring at the wrong time of the crop growth cycle so that could be potentially very damaging to the crop, so we want to try and avoid that. Um, so in our country, we yeah, typically mid-May is when we start putting our wheat and barley in. So basically, things are going to happen real quick from here on out. And uh, yeah, I've got plenty of things on the list I still want to get done. We'll just have to see how we go.
place of bins just got a few screenings and it's still from seed cleaning time we're gonna chuck them in that bin there so dad can feed them out to some sheep at a later stage and do it out in the paddock where the sheep can get it. All right, for the rest of the day, we're gonna go fill up the spot sprayer here on the back of this ewe, and we are going to go and spray a few late season patches of silver leaf nightshade. Gonna go do them now before they set seed and I forget about them and we've got a whole mess for next year. It's honestly not even that cold. I don't know why it's uh, starting so bad, but there you go. So there's two patches out here in the canola and then we'll have to go next door into the quarry paddock and tidy up all the odds and ends in there as well. If you guys have been watching this channel for a while I did a video years ago I'll try and link it in the description it was how to screw yourself over seeding wheat that's the weed right there and there is heaps of it that's germinated out here it needs to be sprayed right now don't have a sprayer we could be in for a good old time I did those two patches of nightshade and I hoed out probably a hundred little blanket weed plants while I was in there but apparently there's a little girl who's really upset and really wants to see dad right now so I'm gonna make a pit stop past home before I head over to the next paddock. I'm just keeping my eye out here for anything that I don't want growing in here. <laughs> Alright that's sorted, back to it. Well, it looks like I got a bit excited previously and already sprayed those three there, so I won't worry about them. Give them a good drink. <laughs> looks like I got a bit of a crowd out there. The neighbour's sheep. Well folks, I'm going to well and truly call that a day. Got a bit going on at the moment and I got a little bit carried away there and it's now 7.30 in the evening, so there you go. But with all that being said, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for watching the videos. We really do appreciate it. If you want to support the channel, just consider liking and subscribing because that really helps us out. You guys have yourselves a good one. Until next time, see ya.